Hello everybody. Today I've got a pair of Nettleton Shell Cordovan tassel loafers that I thrifted for $12.50. Let's clean them up and see how they look. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of Shell Cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. Hello everybody, so here's the shoes that I showed you briefly there in the intro, and um, you may or may not already know what Shell Cordovan is, but if you know what Shell Cordovan is and you see shoes like this, where you know they've had some wear on them, and there's no micro creasing, and you see these gentle rolls, you see this color, especially this kind of color, the variation in it, you'll know right away, this is Shell Cordovan watch. I'm gonna explain a little more, but look at that, there doesn't wrinkle, right? Phenomenal. Uh, Shell Cordovan. This is a material that comes from the hind quarters of a horse. There's only a couple pieces about that big on a horse. Generally speaking, if you change nothing else but the material from calf skin to shell cordovan, it drives the price of the shoe up a uh, you know a couple three hundred bucks just changing the material. The shoe company you may or may not have heard of, may or may not have heard of Nettleton. Nettleton is an old American shoe company. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk a little bit about who Nettleton is. It'll probably just be a couple minutes. If you want to skip the company part. I'm going to put right here in the video, skip to this, uh, you know, many minutes into the video and I'll get to the cleanup. I mean, they're not going to need very much though, because they're in really nice shape. Um, so let's go. Uh, but Nettleton anyway, I looked up their own website. I actually pulled a little bit of information from, uh, the, uh, best website on vintage American shoes on the internet by far, which is vcleat.com. V is in Victor, vcleat.com. And I also found a little bit on style form, according to Nettleton's website. Well, you know, all of them, you know, kind of agree on the basics. Uh, company was founded in 1879 um, by A.E. Nettleton in Syracuse, New York, as a, as a manufacturer of high-end gentlemen's footwear. Nettleton Shoes has been serving the desires of our discerning clients for more than 140 years old. The company has provided footwear of some of the most sophisticated individuals in the country with special requests coming from high-ranking military officers, officers and presidents alike. Edward A. Tagoni purchased Nettleton Shoes in the 1970s, expanding the company's reach internationally. Today, you look on their website, their cheapest, you know, I went to the just traditional, like the Oxfords and loafers. Uh, the cheapest shoe on there was like $595, and then they had ones for $795. You could even design your own, which is really cool. Um, they don't have a ton of information. It just says, like, for example, material, though, the finest leather. Okay, you probably, you know, shell out $600 for a, a cap toe, black cap toe, Oxford, I want to know what the differences are. You know, I mean, it does say good, you're welted, but they don't give a lot of information. But anyway, it was interesting going to style form, style form, basically. Uh, um, style form and a uh, V-Cleat basically said, you know, same beginnings, um, but that there were many ownership changes, according to V-Cleat, uh, from the mid-1960s on before finally closing its Syracuse factory in 1984. And then in another article on vcleat.com, David, uh, the author of that website, says before closing in 1990. So... Um, the style form article I'm guessing was written in around 2010 said that a new company purchased Nettleton, but they're not making shoes. Well, they are now, so there must have been a little hiatus period in there. So a little bit on Nettleton, but um, the reason I was familiar with this name is in my, I don't know, I've been, you know, interested in thrifting and doing this kind of stuff, probably three, four years. I think this is... I can't say this is the first pair of Nettleton shoes. It was probably the first pair of decent ones. It's definitely the first pair, first pair I've bought. I very rarely see them, see them, so I don't think they made a ton of shoes. But let's look at some of the features uh, because uh, your articles all basically said this is a high-end shoe manufacturer. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so let's take a look at the shoes in a little more detail. So uh, as I started to discuss a little bit there, the material of these particular shoes, well, there's the model number, first of all, which is uh, 4065. And if you go to Shell Cordovan Models or you go to vcleat.com, this is confirmed as a Shell Cordovan model. As I said, Shell Cordovan is a highly sought after material and it comes from the hind quarters of a horse. And its main hallmark is, as I already showed you, it does not micro crease. These shoes, uh, according to vcleat.com, there was a line added where it said heel, and then there was a date code like C3, he showed, like a number letter. 
He said that appeared in the 70s, so these might be mid-70s or earlier. I don't know that for a fact. I could be way wrong, okay? But just that's the only thing I could find between all the websites about date coding these things. So it's really hard to tell. I have no idea when they were made, to be honest with you. I don't know these shoes well enough to say, oh, they changed the logo and, you know, this kind of date or anything like that. But here's what I can tell you. For example, let's just look at the heels. Can you see the way uh, these brass... Those look like real black brass nails. If they're like brass coated, they wear into the steel. They look like real brass nails, which is more expensive. It's a hallmark of higher quality. This dovetail rubber leather combo heel is a little more expensive. By the way, look at, for example, here. See this row of nails? How far it is in from the edge? And on the mirror, it's not perfectly mirrored. You know, some initially would say, oh, it's poor quality. No, that's actually a sign of handwork. So what that tells me is there is some hand work done on these things. Does that make sense? Look at the way this nail is further back from that edge than this one. So there's hand work done on it. That's actually a sign of higher quality. Does that make sense? Um, if we look at the stitching here, the stitch density, number of stitches per inch, it's very dense. That's another sign of high quality. The stitching is perfect all the way around, and it is very well captured within that groove. And you can see the detailing there. So that tells me these are high quality. This is, if you can see here, there's the welting, the stitching, and it stops right there. So it is not 360 degrees, it's 270 degree good you welted. That's not a bad thing. Um, you know, so that means the, the rest of the heel is secured a little different method. And that gives you actually a little narrower profile, okay? The finish here is really good. And if we look, what I'm seeing here, can you see that line right there? What it looks like to me is this looks like, I don't know for sure, but it looks like it's a real stacked leather construction heel. It, it, I could be wrong on that, but that's what it kind of appears as if. And as I said, the edge finishing is really nice all the way around. Fudging, see the ridges in there? Really nice. And look at the stitching here on the apron. It's a little tiny bit of damage to the strap on the loafer there. The shell cordovan looks like it's in really good shape and it feels very nice. I'm going to definitely nourish these things. But um, one of the articles in vcleat.com, uh, he had a Nettleton shoe that was uh, cracked and he deconstructed it, meaning he took it apart. And one interesting thing he showed is from deconstructing, you can tell they stained it after they put it together. And I think that's the case. You can see the lighter color down in there, right? That's neither here nor there. Is that, uh, no, that is, I was looking at the stitching around there. It's very nice, right? Beautiful shoes, aren't they? Like I said, they really don't need much. Um, so uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is and they were, it says $25, but it was a half off day, so $12.50 uh, plus tax. I think the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that. And the best product, and I'm sure alcohol and a lot of other things would work, but I have this laying around all the time. Sapphire Reno Matte, this is a it's kind of a solvent. It's very smelly, but, and I hate this bottle shape because it's like so top heavy. You got to be really careful not to tip the bottle over. And I double up the rag because I don't want my fingers touching the smelly stuff, but just take a little bit of this stuff on the rag. And it, paint pen comes right off. I love it when they use a paint pen. I hate it when they use, uh, what do you call that, like a Sharpie. It's smelly, but it works. Gone. Okay. Cap this off. And I'm debating right now on what I do to clean the uppers um, because they look like they're in such nice shape to begin with, you know. Drop the, drop the brush. See, look at that, just working with it. This, was that glued together? It popped apart, just, just brushing it, just touching it from brushing it. I'll have to glue that back together. That may have been two pieces that were glued together. See, a little stuff like this that happens, right?
to condition them. I'm going to use this. I'm not an expert on shell cordovan, but I listen to experts. Uh, David, V. Cleet, a lot of other people, Lexol. Uh, this is Lexol Neat's Foot Leather Dressing. I think it's called Lexol NF is what you'll see it advertised at. It's very thin, very runny. You can hear it's like a liquid. It kind of foams up a little bit when you shake it. I probably shouldn't shook it, but um, Neat's Foot is, this is kind of gross, but Neat's Foot oil comes from the shin bones of cows, and they, I guess they press the bones, and they get the oil, but like I said, people that know more than me say this is good. So I'm going to use it. See how runny it is. It comes out, oops, it spilled a little bit. comes out, um, it's thicker than water, but definitely the thinnest of any of the, I want to get it down into those grooves there for sure but definitely comes up thinner than any of the other leather dressing products I've ever used it feels like to me it penetrates the leather very well see how it gets right in there really want to keep shell cordovan nourished. Once it dries out and it starts to crack, it'll just fall, start to, you know, the whole thing will start to fall apart. Now, if you notice, the parts that I did already, actually, it gives it almost a dull appearance initially. That will go away. I really want to get the areas that flex. Just gonna set that aside. You see it kind of like dulls a little bit? That'll, that'll go away when you brush it. I really don't see any built up, sometimes you'll see people, um, you know, put way too much polish on shell cordovan and, you know, cake up wax and stuff. And I don't see any of that. That's why I'm not using anything to strip them. Trying to shove the rag down even in between the welt and the upper there. I don't know if you've noticed me doing that. And one more time here in the areas that really flex. Let those dry a little bit. Never hurts to cut shoe trees either. All right. So they've had a few minutes to set up. Let's brush them off. Got a nice horsehair brush. And let's. I'm going to back the camera up here a little bit.
none of the secrets of Shell Cordovan care, other than keeping it nourished, is to brush it. And then brush it some more. And then keep brushing it. You know you've brushed it close to enough. You can't move your arms anymore. <laughs> These are actually in amazing shape. I mean, I'm, this is nothing. I'm not. I would not consider this much effort at all. I mean, look at these things. See that color? If you notice, it's not all the same color either. That's one of the beauties of Shell Cordovan. And I'll try and get it in some better light at the end of the video, but it's just got this amazing glow. a little mark there on the surface. See it right there? I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm going to call that patina and leave it alone. Definitely wouldn't want to fill that. I'm not going to go into sanding and show color of it. this one now. So for this, I'm going to use Master All-Purpose Contact Cement, the same stuff that I used to glue on rubber half soles. As I look at this, I think it's definitely, this is definitely the way it's constructed. I don't know if you can see there. You can see that tip is skived, so I do not believe that's a, like a rip.
Now, I'm going to show you the mirror shine technique I learned from Andy Vaughn. Andy Vaughn is the owner of Pure Polish Products, and this is the high shine paste wax. And this particular um, uh, mirror shine that I'm, the style of mirror shine I'm going to do, really, it only works for shell cordovan this quickly. So, you know, press my finger into it, load my finger up actually pretty heavily. And I'm going to go just in front of the crease. The fold there. Grab a little more. It's already pretty shiny, honestly. And on the tip of the toe. Okay. Okay, so we got a drop of water. I go front to back. Tiny bit of water, that was probably too much. Side to side. Now notice, I'm just using my finger. I do a tiny bit more wax. A little bit more wax. And here they are all finished up. And you can see a little bit of the flaws. That mark there. Wait. Wait. I can't let this go. Uh, this has been bothering me. That spot. Let's look at it a little more. This just kept me up. Um, I had this video fully edited. Uh, uh, everything uploaded to YouTube. Ready to release it. And uh, I pulled that back down and worked on that spot a little more. So I went back on these shoes, it was bothering me. Remember that spot? I'll cut in a picture of it here. And what I'm finding is, looks like there was polish. That came off the shoe, that came off the shoe. That spot is pretty much gone. There's a line there now you can see. But I'm gonna keep working on it. And all I'm using is the, almost out, I'm using the Sapphire Reno mat. And I think that spot has come. I think there was some extra polish, but you see there now I need to, Obviously, it's dulled it, so I need to recondition and reshine that, but uh, I'm going to keep working on it. So, there's still a line there now, but that looks much better. It 
It looks much better, doesn't it? Look at that. Now, here they are all finished up. And I think they look pretty doggone good. There's the spot, that line. The spot is gone. And I've got some uh, good indirect light here. It's a cloudy day. And this provides some pretty good indirect lighting. What do you say, Rai Rai? Huh? She doesn't care. I'm very pleased with the way they came out. I just wish these things were my size. There we go. The beauty of Shell Cordovan. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, obviously feel free to peruse and subscribe if you feel so. Um, thank you very much. Have a great day. Wait.